Welcome back to Aliens Watching Reality TV. I'm Erica. And I am Josh. After a very long pause. You love, what is that, just building suspense? I just, like, I like to have an entrance. I'm sorry. Is that bad? I mean, it's not my favorite entrance, but I guess the audience can decide what they all think. Um... So this is a... I think it, what it is is that if we hung out in public, Erica will get all the attention, but <laughs> I give myself a little bit of attention in the this intro. This is your so. way of making sure people pay attention to you? Yeah, it's a very sad, sad way of doing it, but it's, all, it's only our, our subscribers are going to listen to this, so my shame remains limited. <laughs> it's true. This is a, <laughs> this is a premium episode. Um... We tried watching a new show because um, this was a listener request. We watched the first episode of I mean, Jewish I, Matchmaking. I, 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 don't, I don't even. I don't even want to say I tried. It was really easy to watch. Like <laughs> for me, it was kind of funny, actually. Okay. What was your experience? I wasn't very conscious of the fact that I said I tried. I didn't mean anything by that. Oh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, and I also thought. Like, cause yeah, we we didn't really know anything about it besides what's of the title going into it, um, but I feel like it's immediately there's also like tons of neurodiversity related stuff, very apparent as well. Like obvious yeah. neurodivergent people, obviously the first <laughs> few sentences, you know, of your introduction to them, which. Um, is always fun in general, but especially for this show. Yeah, yeah, no, that's one of the things. Once you are, <laughs> I, I just want to say wasp culture yeah. is so, so geared towards neurotypicality, so towards one neurotype, uh, that as soon as you kind yes, of like and vice get versa. into a different culture, <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, wow. Most people are kind of very neurodivergent, you know, they're, they're okay with like neurodivergency being around and in fact, enjoy being around it. Like it's not bad for them. Yeah. Um, I would say there's only one person in this whole episode who like screamed neurotypical to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it was, uh, wait, wait, uh, the stepfather was very quiet, right? I, I don't think we heard anything from the stepfather, but, um, of the people there. Oh, um, okay. We'll get to that. I think I have an idea who you mean. Okay. Um, I'm not going to say yeah, it. Yeah. We haven't discussed this at all. So for once, I don't know Josh's opinions. Yeah. No, this is cool. Like we are, I, I mean, I honestly, it's like only what? 35 minutes. Yeah. It's like a, yeah. 33 uh, minutes. First episode. It, it's not even. <laughs> and it's on Netflix. It if like you want to go watch it before you listen, but if not, we will we will cover it in detail so you don't oh feel my God, like you're I missing. have way more to say than the 30 minutes that time allowed me. I was going to watch I... another episode, but then I was like, no, first <laughs> I need to discuss this with Erica yes. because a lot of things happen that are kind of subtle that you don't get unless you're Jewish. Um, and, and, there, and, and definitely there are certain things that even I don't get because I'm a certain kind of Jew and there are certain kind of there are certain kinds of Jews on this show. Um, and I was thinking, let, so, let's maybe let's uh, share our Jewish did. bona fides up top. Go for it. Okay, mine are, what are you basically nothing. I don't have any. Um, I'm not Jewish, but I I did grow up with. I just grew up around a lot of Jewish people. So I was actually telling Josh that when I was a kid, mm. I thought that the um, American population was like. 30 percent jewish and i still remember the day in third grade that my mom told me it was more like one or two percent and i was mm -hmm. so i was shocked just absolutely shocked um i come from a culture who whose part of their founding myth is that they are part of the lost tribes of israel um but they also probably out of all the people in the world <laughs> hate Jews more than anyone else. 
Like they just, it's not, not hate them. Is in it, that is sense. A, it sounds to me like uh, hating because you're jealous, you know? It's not, no, they there's, hate a, us there's they a hating hate us. that there's a, no, but that's the thing. Um, I'm sorry Atkins to make light actually, of it. I know it's actually a big deal. <laughs> this is, when I say hate them, it's not this in the sense that hate them as people. It's just that. Afghans are the, one of the more most religiously conservative people on the planet because of how much war has eroded the civil society. It has eroded any kind of access to education for a lot of people. So people take comfort and refuge in religion. And religion, as we know, often has very extreme views of any other religious group that doesn't follow similar traditions. You know, this is not... Um, so, so Islam is not like a, a, a what you might call it a, a rarity here. If you go and find very conservative Christians who've had no access to anything but very religious Christian education. Oh, I grew up an atheist hate. in yeah. in Indiana, so yes, I can confirm that um, plenty of Christians in America absolutely fucking hate people who aren't Christian. <laughs> I mean, so so what's going on is I grew up in a in a culture that was very over overly I don't want to say overly but like overtly Muslim, um, but a culture which also had like a share like not a share but like the claimed heritage from Jews. Um, the area that I grew up in was at one point literally called <laughs> the Jewish Plain. Like it was like a, a giant area, a, a plane, and it was called the Jewish plane, a Dash the Yehudi. Um, and it was called that because Pashtun people, like the core of Afghans, lived there. And they were so hated by the people around, that, uh, especially the Mughals, the Mughal Empire of India, that they turned, they were like, you all are Jews, you know? That's, that's why you, you don't like, um, accept authority and civilization because they what they were it wasn't that they were uncivilized they just were independent minded you know they didn't want to be like carry water to for the mughal empire or you know to the anyone um yeah I wouldn't but either. anyway so that's the yeah so i kind of am from that kind of people um the way that i am jewish is very much it, it's very academic so one of the things that you hear in the show, um, you meet Aliza, um, who is a Jewish matchmaker. Um, and uh, before I say anything about, <laughs> before I say anything about how that connects to my story, um, what were your impressions, Erica? Well, I thought you were going to give your Jewish bona fides first, but um, no. First, I just want to hear your your. Um, just my first impression of Aliza. Hmm. I love her. Um, think she's great. Yeah. And also gives me strong neurodivergent vibes. Um, yeah. She has to take notes. She has a whole system. Even just the way that she looks at a lot of things. It's, it's funny because <laughs> you wouldn't necessarily think that like me, an atheist who is um, polyamorous and like – not never like wanted to get married and has never had a desire to get married would have a lot in common with like how I view relationships with a an orthodox Jewish marriage matchmaker but like honestly the way her yeah just her viewpoint on relationships and a lot of her like little aphorisms and stuff is absolutely how I see relationships I I really um I really like her perspective on it, and I think it's very healthy in what what I believe is healthy. What did you think of her? Uh, she kind of looks a little bit at like our um, the manager of the renting agency that we're using. So the whole time I was like, "Oh, you look like this lady who's who's kind of like her, like very uh, business, but also very kind and warm." You know, she's like really pretty. Yeah, like there's this, there's got to be this divide between how kind you are and how realistic you are. You know, 
And so she she seems like somebody who's who's very like keeping it very very real with everyone, you know. Um, it's true. And, she and, is and really mastered being honest and kind at the same time. Yeah, yeah. It's like because in a, in the job that she's in, you kind of have to be that. So I'm going to be the Jew, and I'm going to explain what this is. Okay. You've been listening uh, to a sample of a premium episode of Aliens Watching Reality TV. To hear the rest of this episode, go to patreon.com slash aliens watching reality TV. For only $5 a month, you get an additional full length episode of the podcast every week, along with bonus mini episodes whenever we feel like making them. Your support helps us keep the podcast going and remain ad free because ads are annoying, except for this one, which is super cool. Thank you. I never feel bad cuz I don't like to feel bad.
let's move on to uh, our second Jewish single we meet. Um, we meet Ori. Okay, okay, what was your first impression of Ori? And then I'll share everything I wrote in my notes. <laughs> He kind of left the ocean, right? Like we met him on the beach, really. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right? He was like, he was coming out of the he ocean. He was surfing, yeah. He was surfing and, you know, you're in California and L.A. And, you know, so you're kind of, the expectations you have are suddenly destroyed by the fact that you learn that or he is living with his parents and he also works, well, not with his parents, but his mom. Um, who, um, who is, who has a partner, by the way. Um, and it's also his also boss works. and number one person in his entire life. He's very open about that. Oh yeah. And when he gets married, he's, um, he wants her to live with them. Yeah. So honestly, Ori living but they also, with his but mom here's the best is part. like no, 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 the least the of my concerns with that. No, the best part is that they, since their business, the mom's business is like some kind of event planning, like wedding and whatnot, he knows basically everyone in town. Because <laughs> he's constantly, you know, at weddings and whatnot, and he's met at all the people there. Um, so Incredible. Uh, Ori is the person I said one there was only one person who really screamed neurotypical to me, and that was Ori. He he was very, what should we call it? He was like Shake from Love Is Blind. Yes, yes. Ori is neurotypical to an extent that, like, I found it difficult to enjoy anything about his presence. Um, and is that me being judgy? Sure, but. It's mostly I'm being judgy about the fact that he is so incredibly judgy. Um, so he makes it very clear that he is um, extremely focused on women's appearance. And and that's the main thing he's focused on. And uh, I'm not sure that he sees women as people. Um, this is like, remember... I mean, those of you who have managed to get through Love on the Spectrum episodes, remember when Subod was like, I'm not going if this person is an Indian. You know, like, am I going on a date? Yeah, yeah, I'm. Yo, oh, I'm not going if this person is an Indian. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Like, that was. Yeah, he did not want to date someone who was Indian. And it was like. And this guy wants someone who's blonde. And, and blue eyed, blue eyes. Like he just, I mean, I and isn't sure that like hair dye and colored contacts is enough. Like, he, okay. I mean, he doesn't. He doesn't want you, Erica. Thank God. Um, <laughs> no. So but you don't have brown eyes, right? You have light eyes. I, <laughs> I have such dark eyes. They are one shade off of my pupil i have very very dark eyes you're like a little demon yes like they used to be indistinguishable and now as the i've gotten older now you can barely tell the difference between my pupil and the rest of my eye (laughs) um (laughs) so he does not want me and i'm very glad also he doesn't want me for about 75 other reasons um yeah so ori wants someone he's attracted to um he if there's okay, if there's no chemistry, there's no second date. Um, he he mentions many times how important um, <laughs> this is to him. He acknowledges mm. that he might be too picky. Um, and might be. <laughs> he already basically knows the entire Israeli community in LA, but that's still what he wants. He wants someone in LA who is Israeli. Um, mm-hmm. he feels ready for marriage. He is spiritual. Um, does not keep kosher. Doesn't doesn't uh, want that. Um, and he seems to be one of those men who does not realize that, like, he also has to have good qualities uh, to offer, and um, not. I'm not really seeing any personally. Um, he 
uh, yeah, he's he works for his mom's event planning business, mainly weddings. Um, and he says that he wants a woman with a sense of humor. And this stuck out to me because I don't know. Have you heard this before, Josh? That uh, there's kind of this saying that when men say they want oh they want a woman with a sense of humor, they mean they want a woman who will laugh at their jokes. When pretty much women say they want a man with a sense of humor, they mean they want a man who will make them laugh. Um, I. I was what I I don't know. I was just I hoping we would get like I think any... the compromise is that you know just don't talk to each other ever. <laughs> I just like I don't know. I was hoping that we would get any that they would like look into that claim any further of wanting a woman with a sense of humor because I would just bet anything he is not the kind of man who actually wants a woman who is funny. He wants a woman who thinks he's funny. That's interesting. Yeah. That's what men frequently mean. Because you would think if someone says that they're looking for somebody with a sense of humor, that sounds like you want somebody who is funny, right? But that's that's just <laughs> frequently not what men mean. Because also when women say they're looking for a man with a sense of humor, yes, they mean a man who will make them laugh, but that's not only what they mean. They also want a man who thinks they're funny. They want a man who they can joke around together. And frequently, uh, men want an audience. They want someone to. That is that is literally the word that. I mean, that's that that's what men want. Men basically want a robot that they can have sex with and who will laugh at their jokes. That's it. Yeah, that's that's the vibe and, I get and, from this guy. And you know, cook and clean and whatnot. But he lives with his mom, so you know. He probably wants someone who'll cook and clean for him and his mom. His mom's a busy, busy businesswoman. I used to listen. Here's the thing: I used to live with my mom. I was in my 30s when I was living with my mom, but that was because I was poor shit, and I was, <laughs> you know, I was trying to go to school and you know build, you know, try to rebuild my life after some really hard struggles. Um, I wasn't waiting to marry somebody and bring him into my mom's house. That's surely is, not what I was going to do. I mean, it's not that this is not a huge house, but it's still, you know what I mean? The level of the level of control and dependency there is just a little too much. Yeah, the control, I would say, is the concern. Like the idea that a woman would come into this uh, situation and essentially have to fit into their lives and not have a lot of control over her own life. But just honestly, I am not bothered by people living with their parents. I, you know, even multi-generational families living together, like that's, it's a choice. It's a way to live. So the fact that he lives with his mom is one of the few things I am not going to criticize him on. And I really don't care about. Um, there are so many other things to criticize him on that I, <laughs> I'm gonna focus on it instead. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. The problem with you know, living with his mom is the way that he thinks about women and treats women. Yes, that's the thing. If he just lived with his mom and was like a decent guy, that'd be very different. Yes, and I, I mean, yeah, and the way that you are talking about women is kind of indecent, honestly. Um, and he's just talking. So what really annoys me about like this kind of guy who says this kind of thing um, is talking so much about like wanting someone you are attracted to. You need to have that chemistry. If you try and like <laughs> get somebody to just think critically about that at all, it they always come out like, oh, so you think I should just date somebody I'm not attracted to? You think that, like, there, there's uh, – people tend to be very unreasonable about it because, like, of course physical attraction is important. Of course chemistry is important. Of course you want to be attracted to your spouse. Like, these are not controversial things. Um, 
when it is such a focus and when you can't stop talking about it, that's a concern. And it starts to seem like physical attraction is way more important to you than what kind of like who this person is. And also, I mean, there, what I was going to say, the problem with physical attraction, as we all know, is that anyone who has lived long enough knows that that is just a thing that is very flexible and <laughs> constantly evolves. Like what you're attracted to, who you're attracted to, um, and the person that you're with, like your attraction ebbs and flows. It's very. Yeah. This and is, like, that's OK. And that's still part of a healthy relationship. But like he reminds me of the guys you end up seeing on like Reddit. Am I the asshole going like I'm thinking about leaving my wife? You know, she just has really let it all go since she had our baby three months ago. And um she just doesn't her body's not the same and I'm just not attracted to her anymore. Like if you care that much about some standard like of appearance and attraction, then like nobody can live up to that because everybody's going to change. And it also just to me, it doesn't feel very genuine because like usually it is based in these very like cultural like standards and norms and it's a lot more about like the kind of culturally agreed upon like hotness of somebody that then connotes a certain like status uh upon you that that's what's more important than like truly attraction because i feel like i don't know these <laughs> this kind of guy who tends to talk so much about the importance of physical attraction then whenever uh they are with someone it's like the way they talk about their partner it still is it it still doesn't sound like they're all that into them you know like it's more about you want an extremely hot woman more for like what you think that's going to say about you and how people are going to look at you and i do think like a, a deep insecurity uh, is running underneath um, his, yeah, his desires and what he's looking for and, and really just most of the things he says. And his bombastic overconfidence, I think, really comes from a place of, uh, of a lack of confidence and a lack of a sense of self. And I know, like, I am making a lot of conclusions based off of not a lot, but honestly... These guys are really easy f for me to pick out at this point. They're just like, <laughs> they're really obvious. I mean, part of the reason that is, is because, you know, this is kind of the basic uh, toxic masculinity type. <laughs> which yeah. Is, you know, I mean, in order for us to be able to continue living, we need to see ourselves as worthy of living on this planet. Um, and we all basically have different ways of feeling like we are doing a good job, like the, uh, we are worthy of being here, you know? Um, I, for instance, wake up every morning and I feel like I love my dog and just the fact that I take care of my dog is enough reason that I'm for me to be here, you know? I am, mm -hmm. I'm worthy of being here because, you know, I take care of her I'm, and I'm not hurting anyone else. Um... <laughs> How many people I date or who I have sex with <laughs> has nothing to do with my worthiness. Okay, the problem, the thing with toxic masculinity is that it literally puts that, like, instead of you being a nice person to people, your your worthiness point, the worthiness points increase because, just like you said, you know, you you find a culturally hot person. And you're with them and that just increases your you know your your points your worthiness points yeah like to him that is where he's he, getting his sense of self-worth yeah women are just an accessory basically <laughs> mm -hmm. like, you know <laughs> they make you feel good about yourself um if you're with a hot person that's that's what it, what, it, what works out like if you're with a hot person um 
that means that you are amazing. Uh, which is why you keep seeing really, really rich people who are <laughs> with really, really hot people who are not into them at all. Uh, and we can totally see just because they're like, oh, look, I, I am so powerful. I can make this really hot person be with me, you know, even though maybe they're not into me because of that. It's just the way that toxic masculinity works is twisted and fucked up. And yeah. it's very easy to see once you have been exposed to it. Like, and Erica at this point <laughs> is is in their thirties. Uh, and <laughs> trust me, by, by the time you're twenty, you already can tell. I'm pretty sure as a woman, I have been exposed to plenty of toxic masculinity. That's for sure. Um. So yeah, uh, Aliza, she's all already. Like, okay, we're going to have to work on some things here. And she has a couple, all right, she's got a few, three different sayings <laughs> that she, she's used so far. Um, one is get over your hurdles and under the chuppah. The second is date them till you hate them. And the third is when in doubt, go out. Um, and obviously, okay, hate them is a little extreme, but, you know, I, I totally understand where she's going with these little phrases and, she recognizes that, like, she's going to have to work on this guy in order to uh, really get him to even be able to take part in this process because he is so used to saying no so quickly before he has really gotten to know somebody. And that's just not going to work with um, the the actual like matchmaking process. Um, but we can move on because we come back to him. Um, also, there's another thing that she says. Analysis paralysis. Yes. Um, <laughs> did you, yeah. by the way, did you notice something about her hair and head covering? Well, I know she wears a wig. She's Orthodox. Right. So one of the things. It's also a really good wig. Yeah, it's like a really nice wig, like a, a really, really nice wig. But um, yeah, she she we see her in season in scenes where she just has a hat covering, covering her hair. Um, but she also has a really nice wig. And um, yeah, so does Ori's mom. She also has a wig. Yeah. And wigs are, you know, I feel for everyone who wears a wig and can't get a good one. Because, uh, yeah, she's got a beautiful wig. Yeah. Um, so then we, we meet our next Jewish single, our third Jewish single, Harmony, 44, um, blonde, which at first I was like, oh, are we meeting her as a match for Ori? But no, definitely not. There's no way in hell. Um, yeah, yeah. So Ori, very strong neurodivergent vibes. Um, Ori still doesn't really feel like an adult in the way like a society says what being an adult is supposed to mean mm -hmm. um she's got stuffed animals and unicorns she says she has a hard time owning her age which i thought was an interesting way to put it yeah um i mean we're not that far off in age honestly so yeah. like i can kind of i just i can see her i can see where she's coming thing, from i think the way she describes her relationship to her age is very, very normal for autistic people. I don't know enough about her to say that I think she's autistic or not yet, but I... I, I think she's definitely autistic. I th I think my suspicion is yes. Um, and especially I, just there and if I are know certain ways that like we tend... Like her. Okay. There are just ways we tend to describe ourselves and things we tend to say about our worldview that so frequently, like, we will just be saying almost the exact same thing, even though we have come up with it separately. And just the way she talks about her age is so normal for autistic people. Um, but we are told that it's not normal and we're told to, you know, have shame about it. But she really doesn't feel shame about it, which I, I'm... I'm glad um, mm -hmm. she uh, she wants a child um, mm -hmm. and she 
also wants passion and spontaneity. Um, her dad has Parkinson's and she want, she goes to services for high holidays and is looking for somebody who practices all around that same level of yeah she's in, a little intensity. more yeah yeah she's she's she did not grow up she did not grow up um very traditional because her dad apparently was had been raised traditional and he was not you know into it he was forced into it but yeah. she seems Try to like give her the is, opposite yeah, yeah yeah no and she's kind of finding her way back and it's you know it's beautiful a lot of people do this um yeah, find and, her own relationship to it. Yeah, she sounded li- like she sounded delightful to me, and and some I ways. really liked her. I really yeah. liked her, um, and she's easy to understand. Like I understand her mindset and stuff, which is funny because from the first, I would say like minute we're introduced to her, I wouldn't necessarily think, oh yeah, that's someone I'm going to relate to a lot because I'm just not really like, yeah. I'm not, I'm not a unicorn person, um, but I definitely I get her and I like her. Um, I I do think it was helpful though that when she says she wants a child and then she says she wants somebody who is spontaneous and will be down to fly to Bali next week that Aliza yeah. presses her on that and asks like well how is spontaneity going to work with a child how are those things going to work together and um and I I think it's honestly Aliza she she just she really gets it because it's not mm-hmm. that you can't still have a fun interesting life and have a kid it's that if you are the guy who is down to go to bali next week is probably not also the guy you can trust to like build a family with now Uh and it's more about what she wants to find harmony a family man if that is what you know, if Har- if Harmony wants to have a family, then she needs a man who is ready for that now. And I think that's really important because um, this is just something like we have seen come up on dating shows. You know, this sort yeah, of debate. Yeah. And I think Aliza really gets to the heart of it. Of like, yeah, it's not that you can't have fun and have kids, but like, what is going to be that other person's priority at this time in life and i mean harmony says that she has gotten like her fertility checked out and she's still plenty fertile and that's great but like just realistically 44 is when things are uh, changing there or you know they're going to change soon and if she is still in a good place fertility wise then um yeah, she needs somebody who is ready much sooner rather than later. Because, like, you know, we talked about it um, on the ultimatum queer love because, like, the people in their early 30s, they were thinking a lot about, okay, it's time to start having kids. But it's true that, like, your fertility, it doesn't really, really change or start changing for most uh, people until around 40. Uh, so like we are kind of pressured to worry about it sooner than we need to worry about it in general in the society. But just like realistically, like 44, yeah, y- you do have to start taking that very seriously. Mm-hmm. Or you have to start seriously thinking about what is your life look like if you don't have kids? And is that okay? Because sometimes when people really get down to it, um it turns out that like they thought they wanted kids or they thought they were supposed to want kids more than they actually really want them and that is also totally okay yeah that's that's i mean to me the the way that the realness of eliza was really really nice it was like listen I know that you, the, there might exist in the world a person like that, you know, that yeah. you can have a kid with and the next week flying to Bali uh, and they will work out somehow. Uh, but I don't think Aliza has the time <laughs> to find yeah. that person. She's for realistic you. about what kind of yeah. person she might be able to find for her. And I just thought, I don't know, I really liked the way Aliza handled it because it wasn't shaming. It wasn't mm-hmm. like, it wasn't, um, 
moralistic or anything. It was it was practical and to the point, um, and an important point. Uh, yeah. Okay, so then we go back to Danny, and now Danny of the good eyebrows is meeting David <sighs> for their first date. His eyebrows are good. Uh, <laughs> Excellent. That, yeah. She and asks, as Elisa said, they don't have mm-hmm. to be, they have to be good, but not as good as hers. So, <laughs> yeah. And she really just has to not hate them on date one. Um, so, Danny asks David how he feels about splitting food, and he's down. What do you think about splitting food on dates or just in general? What do I think? I'm totally yeah. down. I would ex- I would like to experience more foods. Let's order. Right, if that's what I always is, yeah. think. Yeah, totally. I'm I'm that person. Yeah, I love it. Um, I love it when because like I don't demand, especially like friends. They don't have to like eat vegan and gluten free around me. But like, man, if they're down, so that we can both get something and we can share and then we can eat. More kinds of food that is good. Oh, that's my favorite. I love that. Um, so we don't see a, a ton of their date, but in general, David seems nice. Seems like they're getting along pretty well. But Danny does notice that David doesn't pour water or wine in her glass when he pours them in his. Like this whenever is he's refilling, such a big deal to her himself. If she says, you know, like it's not like a deal breaker or anything, but I noticed, and. I, I do think this is a, like, it's something, I can't even say for sure if I would have noticed, if I would notice, but I do think it is worth noticing. I think it can be meaningful, just like, just something worth, like, keeping in the back of your mind, and then you can keep it in mind once you have many more data points along with just, is this person, uh thoughtful you know (laughs) Hmm. because would i only refill my own wine um probably not i think i i would you know like it it does show being thoughtful and of course like i have adhd do i always manage to be thoughtful like is it possible that sometimes i would only refill my own water and i don't notice that anybody else (laughs) that like Mm. is yeah it's quite possible but also but i am not going to be consistently the most thoughtful person i might forget your birthday if that's the most important thing to you you shouldn't date me you know like it it can be meaningful yeah yeah no i mean for me the there's it just i will do that for other people but i if you don't do that for me i'm not like torn about it yeah, I, I, I think, I mean, she didn't seem super upset about it, but she noticed, and yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, I'm I'm, I'm totally, like, I feel like I see her position. Yeah. Yeah. So then we go back to Ori. Ori is about to go on his first date. He says <sighs> he's afraid she's going to match him up with someone he's not attracted to, and it is important that his future wife is beautiful. I'm just like... Oh you my god. Are really just proving to me that you are who I thought you were. Um like do you do you so remember annoying. the way that um the way that the previous single Jewish single the way the previous single uh, Jewish single described her feeling like what would she like to feel when she sees the her match? Harmony? Yeah. Hmm. I just remember She's, that she wanted them to both like, like adore each other or something. Like, but yeah, is there something? Uh, yeah, it seems like you remember. I mean, do you? No, no, no. I mean, that's that's the point. Like, does does he doesn't really care about what he she thinks about him? He's very very. Yeah, careful. it's not a reciprocal like thing. It's not yeah, that we're attracted like, to yeah. each other even. I'm just, and can I be honest? Like, he's not like the hottest dude in the he's world. He's not. Yeah. He's not. I, he, I would I'm not sorry, my man. go out Corey, with him just on appearance alone. Friend, I'm sorry. If bro, if like I was set up on a blind date with him, I would, thing. I would be like, yikes, damn it! I yeah, I'm not attracted to him. 
even if even if he had a great personality but like <laughs> <laughs> not that not that that is a problem you know uh but yeah it is just always a little annoying where it's like you know what if you are gonna be this obsessed with other people's looks maybe like be better looking yourself and 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 this makes sense in two ways okay um in the first way is that remember in that scene where they're talking about his mom turns to Aliza Az- and says he like he's really picky, right? Yeah. That it's gonna be like it's gonna he's gonna give her a hard time, um, and then also remember the fact that he talks about how he has a lot of first dates. And, and not a lot of both, second dates, yeah. Yeah, and we both kind of, I think our audience also understands what happens at the first date. He shows up, and if they're not super hot, he goes away, basically. Yeah, I definitely get the impression that he wants a 10, and that yeah. he is consistently going to be um, disappointed uh, with women who are attractive and beautiful, and he mm-hmm. wants somebody who is a lot better looking than he is. And, yeah. uh, yeah, you know, like you were saying, you can get that if you're, like, a billionaire, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> or, like, really listen, famous or there's, something. There's like, this... have something else that really, have something else that tens want. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like, first of all, if you want, that, that, one of the things that really will really help you in dating is figuring out what kind of person you are, what your interests are, what subgroup you fit in. Because people want to date people in their subgroup way more than they want to date people who look a certain way. Okay? And so if you are into models, okay, most models kind of want to hang out with other people who are models. <laughs> if because Yeah, or people who can help them in their modeling career. Exactly. And um, I think the person who shows up, what are your thoughts? Um, so I wrote down, Adi is walking up, and if she's not pretty enough for him, he should shut up forever. Okay. Because she's gorgeous. And, like, honestly, he doesn't, like, he doesn't even deserve to go with somebody so pretty. So pretty. She but. is so pretty. Yeah. yeah. I was like, dude, why? Are... If he ends up uh, shitting yeah. on her for not being blonde and blue eyed. Mm. Mm-hmm. And know. the whole. I, I already like also... her more than him and I know nothing better. <laughs> and listen, uh, Israeli men are also kind of notorious about liking, like being too much into the blue eyed, green eyed, blonde European type. I mean, it's already quite obvious that he is, um, like, everything about him, his entire personality stems from insecurity and a lack of self-esteem. So, like, that does also. Yeah, it's, there's a lot going on. There's a lot to unpack. Um, But we have five more episodes to go. Um, Yeah, I guess so. We, we're just trying this out. We hadn't, like, fully committed to, okay, this is our new show or anything. But, like, let us know what y'all think. Do you want us to keep covering uh, Jewish matchmaking? Um, we Should we try other new shows? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling open-minded. We also still don't have a, a new show picked for our, our main podcast. So, um yeah, um, yeah. I mean, for me, this was really, really. This was really I enjoyed it a lot, cover. for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You I'm, obviously, I'm, I'm really... have a lot to say about it. Oh yeah, I'm definitely. I have so much to say about this. I'm like, this is this is really, really my my uh, my thing. Um, also, one of the things that I didn't want to do too much of during this episode, which we will do in subsequent episodes, is that. There's a lot of Jewish cultural stuff happening that I want to talk about, but it will just take all of the time of the episode. So what I want to do is I want to slowly lay it on you um, as we move forward. Um, And it will all kind of make sense. Yeah, sounds good. 
Um, it's also quite possible, like, because, as I said, I've always grown up knowing a lot of Jewish people. Um, I don't know what other people don't know. So if you are listening and something, you know, has been curious or uh, you've been curious about something or you have questions or, you know, um, just write us an email at aliens watching reality tv at gmail.com and um i will make sure that josh reads it and uh, we will respond to it on the podcast yeah we cannot we this is really really coming from the heart we love getting comments we love getting um five star uh, we, we just love all kinds of communication. It really, it really helps us understand things in a little better. Like as an autistic person, I'm really interested in knowing what other people think think about things like this because then it helps. It just gives me more data. Data is what I want. Yes, and um, I do have to say, just since Josh did mention their views, uh. If you are going to mention Josh specifically in a review, please remember that Josh uses they, them pronouns. Um, you can use any pronouns for me. We're both non-binary, but we are just different in how we use pronouns. But um, please don't misgender Josh in our reviews because that makes both of us unhappy. Thank you. I appreciate that. I I usually just say they, them for... Um... Erica, because they are an entity. They're like a parahuman yeah. entity. We definitely, me. they them each other on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. But like, I don't really, yeah. If But you might see other pronouns used for me or I might use different pronouns for myself yeah. and that's fine. But like, that was a little disappointing to me to see, not only you know for the obvious reasons, but just because like, come on, if you're if, a fan of this podcast, then you've only ever heard they, them used for Josh. So, like, that should be a, maybe a, Thank maybe you. a hint. <laughs> Thank you. I love, I love that Erica's this thoughtful. Like, see, this is the kind of, like, the way that Erica's thoughtful and positive like this is exactly the way that Danny's date wasn't with the wine. <laughs> <laughs> it was a beautiful callback. I, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. The yeah. way that I like turned this back there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, like that's, I, 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 yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. Oh, of course. Um, and yeah, thank you again to everybody in the audience for listening. And we are excited to be back next week with another episode. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. And until then, till death do us part. Amen. Bye. Bye. Welcome to the world. Let me tell you what I've learned about it. Aliens Watching Reality TV is hosted by Erica Heidewald and Josh Sharier. It's produced and edited by Erica Heidewald. That's me. And our theme song is Just World by Erica Heidewald, which is also me. Available for streaming on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you for listening. And as always, until death do us part.